Welcome back to the deep dive. We're getting tactical today, really diving deep into a fascinating piece of military strategy. Specifically, we're looking at Karl von Klauslitz's on war and how he breaks down defensive battles. And this isn't just your typical, you know, defensive strategy 101. Right. Klauslitz kind of flips the script on how we usually think about defense mm. because he argues that to have a truly strong defense, you actually need a very strong offensive element. Okay, now that's interesting. It seems a little counterintuitive, right? Sure. So before we unpack all of that, yeah. can you set the scene for us? Because Clausewitz was writing this back in the early 1800s. Right. What did warfare actually look like back then? So picture this. Huge battlefields, armies moving in massive formations, wow. infantry and cavalry clashing in open fields, Okay. muskets and cannons. I mean, we're talking really limited technology compared to what we think of today. Yeah. Fortifications, though, were meticulously planned out but and battles battles could drag on for days often incredibly bloody affairs yeah, that's a very different picture than say you know oh yeah drones and lightning fast strikes that we see in modern warfare absolutely so just to clarify Klausowitz is saying that even with these massive armies yes and these kind of limited you know maneuverability options a purely defensive posture yes it wasn't enough. That's exactly right. To be successful. Yeah. And this is where Clausewitz gets really interesting. Yeah. Because he argued that just withstanding attacks, you know, just kind of waiting for the enemy to tire themselves out, that wasn't enough for a real lasting victory. Right. He saw a strong defense as something much more active, much more about, you could say, controlled aggression. Controlled aggression. So not just holding the line, but knowing when and where to punch back. Exactly. He yeah. lays out a whole strategy for weaving offensive action into a defensive posture. All right. Well, let's break it down. What are the key elements of, say, a Clausewitzian defensive battle? Okay. So first, you have to choose your battlefield and you choose it wisely. You're leveraging terrain, whether that's hills, rivers, anything that's going to give you an advantage. Makes sense. Then you fortify those key points you know, making them as impenetrable as possible. Okay. But, and this is important, you're not just setting up defenses. You are absolutely preparing for a counterattack. So it's also like strategically luring the enemy in, setting a trap almost. Exactly. That's a great analogy. Okay. Clausewitz actually talks about applying pressure against the center of gravity. Okay. So this means understanding what is most critical to the enemy's attack. Hmm. And you're focusing your efforts there. Okay. You let them exhaust themselves against your strong points, but all the while you are wearing them down, you're probing for weaknesses. Right. And then when their offensive reaches its peak, that's when you hit them hard and you exploit that vulnerability. Interesting. You disrupt their momentum and that's how you turn the tide of the battle. Now, you mentioned center of gravity. Can you elaborate on that a bit? What did Clausewitz actually mean by that? Sure, so in the context of a battle, Think of it as the enemy's critical vulnerability, right? Mm. Like the point on which their entire attack hinges. Okay. It could be their supply lines. Yeah, yeah. It could be a key command post. It could even be something less tangible like their morale. Mm. But the point is a skilled defender identifies that center of gravity and they use the enemy's own momentum against them. So it's almost like turning their strength into a weakness. Exactly. Interesting. Now, did Clausewitz give any historical examples of this kind of defensive strategy actually working? He did. He points to the Battle of Leipzig in 1813. Okay. The Allied forces, even though they were initially on the defensive, used this strategy of these strategic counterattacks to secure a really important victory against Napoleon. Wow. And then there's also the Battle of Katzbach, where the Prussians, again, initially in a defensive posture, completely routed the French using well-timed offensives. So these aren't just examples of holding the line. Yeah. These are examples of shaping the entire battle from a position of defense. Interesting. Okay, so we're starting to see how this idea of offense within defense. Yes. It isn't just some theoretical concept. No. This is a battle-tested strategy. And it is. But these are 19th century battles that you're talking about. Right. How do these principles translate to modern warfare with all of the technological advancements that we've seen? And that's what's so remarkable about Klausowitz, right? Yeah. Because the weaponry, the technology, yes, it's evolved, but these core strategic principles that he identified are as relevant as ever. Wow. It's about adapting those principles to the modern battlefield. So we're talking about adapting 19th century strategies to the 21st century. Yeah. Help us connect those dots. Okay. What would a Clausewitzian defense look like 
in modern warfare. Okay, let's take cyber warfare, for example. Okay. Imagine a nation facing a cyber attack. Yeah. Now, a purely defensive approach might just try to block that intrusion, right? Right. Build up stronger firewalls. Uh -huh. But a Klauswitzian approach would go further. So instead of just shoring up defenses... Sure. You're yeah. saying they'd be looking for a way to strike back. Exactly. Okay. They might use their own cyber capabilities to target the attacker's infrastructure. Wow. Disrupt their command and control. Yeah. Essentially turning the tables. So you're using their aggression against them yeah. in the digital space. It's offense within defense, but in the digital age. That's fascinating. It really highlights how these principles can be applied across such different forms of warfare. Right. But taking it back to Klausowitz's analysis for a moment. Yeah. He goes even further than that, doesn't he? He does. He actually argues that a well-executed defensive battle can actually lead to more decisive victories than a purely offensive one. Yes, and it's fascinating when you think about it, because mm -hmm. if you think about an attacker, they often aim to encircle, right? Right, right. To constrict, to limit the enemy's options. Right. But a skilled defender who's using this blend of offense and defense mm -hmm. can use that very pressure against the attacker. Yeah. It's almost like that martial arts principle, using your opponent's weight against them. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. yeah. By yielding strategically, by choosing when and where to engage. Okay. The defender can actually stretch the enemy's forces. Okay. Creating gaps, creating vulnerabilities. So they get spread too thin. Exactly. And then you can exploit those weaknesses. Then boom, they can counterattack with concentrated force, potentially splintering those overexpended enemy lines. You know, that reminds me of what we were talking about before, that pressure against the center of gravity. Yes. It's not just about withstanding that pressure. Yes. It's about knowing when and where to apply it back. Exactly. To inflict the most damage. You've got it. And Klausowitz, he emphasizes this point again and again. Yeah. A defender shouldn't just be thinking about holding the line. Mm. They should be constantly analyzing, planning for that decisive counterstrike. Okay. And he uses the Battle of Katzbach, which we talked about earlier, as a prime example of this. Right. The Prussians, initially on the defensive, right. they didn't just repel the French, they routed them. Wow. Using this exact strategy, oh, strategic yielding, and then a devastating counteroffensive. So to be clear, this isn't about just surviving the enemy's attack. No. It's about exploiting that situation to fundamentally change the dynamics of the entire conflict. Absolutely. Wow. And he uses another battle as an example, the Battle of Leipzig. Okay. He illustrates how a decisive victory from a defensive posture can completely shift the strategic landscape, mm -hmm. potentially dividing enemy forces, throwing their whole campaign into disarray. Wow. A truly effective defense doesn't just win the battle. Yeah. It can dictate the course of the entire war. It really makes you think about strategy in a whole new light. It does. It's not just about being aggressive. It's about being adaptable. Yeah. Reading the situation, knowing when to push and when to hold back. And that's such a critical skill, not just on a battlefield, right. but in yeah. any kind of strategic thinking. Recognizing those subtle shifts in momentum, Knowing when to seize the initiative, that's the hallmark of a great strategist. Absolutely. And to illustrate this point even further, Klausowitz uses a really interesting analogy in this chapter. No. Oh. He compares a defensive battle to a fire. A fire. Oh, hey, now I'm really intrigued. Right. How does that work? So he says the defender should observe the battle as it burns with a moderate blaze before him. Okay. The idea is... You don't want to let the fire rage out of control, Okay. but you also don't want to extinguish it prematurely. So you're letting the enemy expend their energy against your defenses. Yes. But you're also kind of managing your own resources, waiting for that perfect moment to strike. Precisely. It's about finding that sweet spot, right? right. That point where the enemy has overextended themselves. Right. Their resources are depleted and maybe, just maybe, their confidence is waning. Okay. That's when you exploit their exhaustion and turn the tide decisively. It really is a powerful image, this like controlled burn. Yeah. You're letting the enemy think they have the upper hand, but you're really orchestrating their downfall. You got it. And it's that orchestration, that strategic mastery of a defensive battle. That's what Klausowitz, he really wants to drive home. He's right. trying to give us, well, give anyone reading his work a framework for thinking about defense, not as this passive thing, but as a launch pad for decisive action. So for our listeners out there, and we know many of you have firsthand experience with the complexities of military strategy, yeah. what's the key takeaway from Klausowitz? What can they really glean from this chapter? 
I think the biggest takeaway is that a well-executed defense, it's not about just absorbing blows, right? It's not about waiting for the enemy to make a mistake. Right. It's about actively shaping the battlefield. Mm -hmm. You're dictating the terms of engagement, even when it seems like you're on the back foot. You know, yeah. it's about being adaptable, recognizing those shifts in momentum that we talked about. And then, boom, you seize the opportunity to deliver that decisive counter blow. It's about turning the table, flipping the script. It's about understanding that a defensive position, when it's handled strategically, can be the foundation for a truly game changing victory. Absolutely. And that is something Klausowitz, he understood this on, I think, a very fundamental level. You know, yeah. he reminds us that true mastery in any conflict, whether it's a battlefield or just, you know, life in general, it comes from recognizing that the lines between offense and defense, they're rarely fixed. Right. Often the most effective way to achieve your objectives is to be the one who controls the tempo, even when it seems like you're reacting to your opponent's moves. Wow, talk about a deep dive. I know, right? We went from the battlefields of 19th century Europe all the way to the digital front lines of modern warfare and all through the lens of one, you know, brilliant military theorist. Yeah, and you know what? We've only just scratched the surface of on war. I bet. There's a reason why this book is still studied in military academies and war colleges, you know, across the globe. Right. It's a treasure trove of strategic insight. Absolutely. So to our listeners, we encourage you, keep exploring Clausewitz, keep thinking critically about strategy, and don't ever underestimate the power of well-planned, well-timed, and utterly devastating counteroffensive. Until next time, thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive.